Ah, sure. It'll be grand. Hello, I'm Matt Ryan, and welcome to Ball in Europe. And today we are talking about a certain Luka Doncic and his fine start to the season, although some people are beginning to panic. I'm here to tell you why you shouldn't be panicking. But before I tell you all about that, if you haven't already, please subscribe. It helps a lot. And now, don't panic. So this is somewhat inspired by, uh, I think it's Mavs Reddit, really, more than anything else, because I'm on that quite a bit. I'm on Reddit far more than I should be. But it's essentially, you know, the, I've seen a lot of the same general vibes from a lot of Mavs fans to start the season, which is essentially that Doncic is, how should I phrase this, not looking like he'd looked at the peak of his powers last season. And that's a good thing, is the short version. Uh, I think it's great. Because you don't want Luka Doncic to be at his peak in November. Uh, October is when I first started seeing these. So you, you obviously want him to be good. But yeah, I think generally speaking, a superstar not being at the peak of their powers in October, November is a good thing. But the obvious concern is, well, what if he stays like that? What if it's a rut? And everything we've ever seen before about Luka Doncic says, that's not likely. Like, I even saw one person saying, I'm not saying he's washed to 25. And I'm like, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, I, even respecting that with a response feels disgusting to me. Uh, but, like, listen, guys, come on, folks. I said guys, that's, that's gendered. Folks, come on. We're talking about, like, you know, the guy who's been favorite with the bookies for MVP for the last four seasons going into the campaign. There's a reason for that, and it's because he finds a way to put up the big numbers, to put it all together, to get it going. Um, and it's like, yes, it's actually a good thing that this looks like it's his first bit of organized basketball since the finals. And you know why? Because I've been saying this for ages, which is Luka Doncic has been playing without real rest in between seasons for like f several seasons in a row. So he came into this campaign actually rested. And that he wasn't playing heavy amounts of organized basketball since, like, the start of July, I think, was his last game that mattered, uh, is a good thing. Like, that's a really, really, really good thing. And Mavs fans are worried that he looks a bit rusty to start the season. Rust is the greatest sign you could have possibly hoped for that this rest has actually been restful. Uh, as a person who, you know, spent 20 years doing what I do and I'm overworked, I can tell you that, like, when I'm at my freshest, um, it's, you know... Starts off a bit, oof, yeah, oof, 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 you know, things aren't typed right, things aren't spoken right. There's a little bit of ifs and buts. But then, as I get into the groove, get into the mood, and I'm on commentary, or I'm writing, suddenly, when it starts to matter, it gets a lot better. And it's going to matter. So, this is not the Mavs we've known from the last couple of seasons. We're just saying a lot, given last season's Mavs went to the frickin' finals through an absolutely brutal Western Conference playoffs. Like, if the if the team from the West who had won it, be it the Mavs or anyone, by the way, had won the finals last year, it would go down as one of the most battle-hardened uh, champions in NBA history. Uh, and that's just to be clear, whoever had come through, because all the routes through the West, obviously it was the Mavs that came through, were brutal. Brilliant. It's a brilliant series. I mean, as a neutral basketball fan here watching Dublin, the West was great to watch. Uh, you know, these are all tearing lumps out of each other and making each other exhausted. This is different, like, this is a Hamas team designed to try and go that extra step. And you brought in Clay. you've got Kyrie and Luca properly gelling, and yeah, you've got to gel Clay into that lineup, you know, you've added a splash bro who is determined to still be relevant, and he's showing that determination. Uh, and so, yeah, of course Luke is going to have to adapt, but he's adapting having, you know, actually been able to do what I like to do the best, which is put the feet up and not worry about the world for a few months. And again, that's as normal. Like, the goal is not for Luka Doncic to be putting up MVP numbers in October, November. It's for him to be delivering MVP quality performances, championship winning performances, you know, on a consistent to semi-consistent, well, on a semi-consistent basis right now, or really next month, to be honest, and on a consistent basis once we get you know, all-star break forward. That's when you want him to be really revving up the engine. Like, you don't want to run your, you know, superstar into the ground. And people go, oh, I don't want to hear about load management. This isn't the load management thing, although 
if you, I will probably do a load management video in the future. This is a working things out thing. Like your primary goal right now is how do you get Luca, Clay, and Kyrie to work together best? Strangely enough, that's going to involve some things not working early on. Uh, you know, because we, as humans, it's what we do. We learn from our mistakes and we learn from experience. They're like the two things that we rely on most. You've added an extraordinarily good piece this season. It's not going to be the easiest thing. Like, if I'm going to use a horrible example here, but it's relevant. That first season, the Miami Heat's big three had together. Like, there were some, there were some cool moments to watch. But what you're forgetting is, long before the Mavs beat them in the finals, there were some ugly ass performances where they clearly had no chemistry whatsoever. This is different, obviously, because you're only adding one big piece, but it's still a big piece being added. By the way, the same with the Celtics 08 Big Three. Like they started off like a house on fire in terms of the wins losses, but they made some ugly work at some bad teams with that really, really hot start. So again, it's a case of figuring it out. You've got three guys that you know, different stages of development and, you know, experience and all that. Obviously, Clay and Kyrie are closer to each other, but the point is in terms of volume and usage and all that and how they're building up, yada, 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 the, the flow of basketball. Uh, and, yeah, strangely enough, it's not quite perfect yet. If it was, I mean, this would be a very boring season for me as neutral, but even for you as Mavs fans, because part of the joy of seeing a new lineup is seeing them figure it out. And these are three very intelligent guys figuring it out at the same time. These are, and also, again, reminder, like, Kyrie may not believe the earth is round, but Kyrie believes he can be the best pal to anyone on a basketball court and make them feel at ease. And my word, he puts his work in doing that. Like, he, there's a reason he is an ideal teammate in the eyes of so many basketball players the highest highest level and yeah he's getting it done and i think when you've got a Kyrie there to work with luca to work with clay i think it's going to be fine so again don't panic but i suppose there is one aspect to all this which is why we're starting to see the initials oh my god is this okay is this going to be fine oh god uh, let's talk about it you know what i'm getting to Yes, he's going to moan. Luca moans. It's just part of who he is. Like, part of it comes back to, really, you see a lot more of it in Europe, I will say, than you do in the NBA, in terms of guys giving out to the refs and moaning at it. So part of it is, like, you know, it's just what we do. We are a lot more direct with the refs than it is in the NBA. But Luke is obviously an NBA veteran now. But, uh, you know, he's he, he, he likes what he does. And, like, you go, hey, Nick Jokic doesn't, like, moan to refs to that degree. And, and that's true. But, like, Jokic is shall we say, a bit more reserved character. Luke is a fired-up guy. He finds that, you know, that heat that brings it out. And uh, it's where he goes. And, like, remember, he's Slovenian, but uh, he also, you know, played a lot of his uh, basketball development in Spain. Two places where that, like, work in the officials thing uh, is part of it. And you might go, but it, the officials are just going to, like, you know, like, look look for, look down and further. And it's like, dude, Luke has a couple of options when things go wrong. He can blame himself and get down. You can blame his teammates and get them down, or you can blame the official. And it's like, uh, Luke was just having a moment of the officials. You know, that's, uh, I, I'm an ex-ref in multiple sports, and I have a very, I had a very, shall we say, direct approach to dealing with any form of dissent. Luke can get away with a lot more in the NBA, so I'm not worried about the moaning. Is it going to cost him individual awards? No. Uh, short version. Uh, is it going to hurt his performance? I really don't think so, because he's always moaned, and uh, he's always found a way to work and to, to deliver. Like, you know, it, 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 how should I put it? If he's moaning late in a playoff game and you're losing by 20, then you should be worried, but not about him moaning. <laughs> you know, so the moaning really is over, overcooked as a thing. It's just part of his personality. It's just what some players are like. You know, is it my favorite thing to do, Luca? At all? Not at all. Like, you know, like, I, but I was always more of a Tim Duncan guy. It's like, you know, just like, you know, go out there, get it done. Like, but <laughs> love me some Luca. Uh, I just mean personality wise, I, you know, like Tim's approach to life, but I also love Luca's personality. So there you go. And yeah, I kind of look at this and I go, we're all overthinking this. Like, you know, this 25 year old who's one of the most, if not the most watched players in the sport. Of course, he's going to be under the microscope and every single mistake he makes is going to be, or every single underperformance compared to superstar underperformance is going to be overanalyzed. And I think that's the thing. We are, we are overthinking this. He's going to be fine. He'll work this out. Uh, again, I don't think it's a mass panic amongst uh, Mavs fans. There's certainly no panic amongst NBA scribes from what I can see. And I think 
nobody in the Mavs is getting worried about it yet. That's very visible. Like they all seem chill. So don't worry. Luca is going to figure this out. He has to uh, because that's his nature. He'll get annoyed at himself if he doesn't. But also, this stuff takes time. He's, uh, you know, get, getting. He's finally got the extra piece of help. I think that the Mavs were looking for. And uh, he's now working out how he makes the best use of that extra piece around him. So, yeah, you know, we're going to have some really cool lineups of, this, of, a, of a three-man backcourt. That's going to be amazing. Uh, but, yeah, I think right now, do they expect to see Luca be quite so inefficient? Eh, probably expect a bit more efficiency. But I'm kind of relieved to see he's actually not peak efficiency right now and that he builds into the groove. Um I've already written an article saying I don't think, you know, MVP should be the focus this year. I'm not saying he can't win it. I'm just saying it shouldn't be the focus. And um, I think everything is going as the mouse should want it to go in terms of getting everything to work. If you like this video, or even if you didn't, uh, give, it a, give us a subscribe. It always helps. And we do videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I don't know why I always do my fingers that way. Uh, I am currently in Athens when you're seeing this. I'm not when I'm recording this, but when you're seeing this, I'm in Athens uh, doing some big projects out there around um, the Greek Derby and other stuff, which will hope to bring you lots of both next week and in the new year. Uh, but until Friday, when I hope you join me again, I will see you soon.